Hi everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. I have a Christmas card to share with you today. And this is made using minimal supplies, but a really pretty effect. So I'm using some watercolor and some gold glitter ink as well. So to get started, I have an A2 size folded card, just side folded, and a piece of mixed media card stock that I'm going to use for the background. I'm using this stamp set from Lawn Fawn. It's called Winter Alpaca. It's so cute, and I've used it a hundred times, I'm sure, but I really love it. And I'm going to use the Merry Messages stamp set from Lawn Fawn as well for the greeting. So I'm thinking maybe Happy Holidays, or um, I might look at that when I get to that part. I'm also going to use my Core watercolor set. I really like Core because the colors are super, super vibrant, and they move really well. Um, in water. So if you have a water background, like if you wet your paper first, they blend really nicely. So I really like some of the teals. Um, and that's my color chart there, just comparing the six colors and what they look like when they're mixed together. I have a Grumbacher brush, and this is the Windsor & Newton Gold Drawing Ink that I'm going to use as well on my background. I have a gold Jelly Roll pen, so if you didn't have the Windsor & Newton Gold Ink, you could use just a Jelly Roll pen as well. And Memento Tuxedo Black ink will be used for stamping and Copic coloring. So let's get started. We're going to do the background first. So I'm just going to prepare my surface. I have some washi tape and this is just uh, basically a masking tape. You can get it in um, the crafting section at Michael's. They have it a lot for scrapbooking or just random stuff. It's everywhere. I'm sure you know what it is. Um, but if you don't, that is what it is. So I'm just using um, an old one I have and I'm going to put it down just to block out uh, the background so to create that pattern and you could go in and measure this with a ruler but that's way too much fussing and I just wanted to eyeball it if it looks good when I'm looking at it then that's how I'm gonna look at it anyway so I, I think that that is just the easiest and best way so I'm just putting all these um, bits of washi tape down and it's sticking to my background as well just to keep that card in place so I'm kind of looking at this mixture here with cobalt teal and green gold I kind of like that warm green color uh, for Christmas for my Christmas card so these are the two core paint colors and I really love core if you've never used core like I mentioned they're really vibrant uh, and they're made from gold which makes uh, the the high-end acrylic paints you might have seen um, at the craft stores as well and I just love these paints they're really beautiful and they're really nice to work with but you could of course use any watercolors that you might have on hand so I'm putting down a generous amount of the cobalt and then bringing in that green gold. I did have a little too much green gold. It doesn't take a lot to tint that blue, that cobalt. So I'm going to bring in a little bit more of the blue. I'm not going to mix this perfect though. I really do want to have kind of a varied color between those two uh, colors. So seeing uh, the colors, each one separately on the page and then blending together, I don't want them to be perfectly mixed and even. So I'm coming in with a flat brush and let me just check. I think this is a half inch. Yes, a half inch Grumbacher. Um, and so I'm just uh, going in between the washi tape stripes and just brushing it. Now, because I'm using mixed media cardstock, I do find that that gives more of a saturated look than watercolor does, watercolor paper. So that's another reason why I'm using, um, or the reason why I'm using mixed media cardstock, just to get that really saturated, intense brightness that it'll, it'll give to the watercolor when it's dry. So I've gone over this once and I'm going over it again and I'm picking up more of the green color in that mixture, in that paint mixture, and very loosely painting over the blocks, the color blocks, not trying to completely coat them, but really make it look streaky so that you can see those brush strokes. And that gives a lot of interest to that background. So it's not just a flat one single color. It's got a little bit of a, uh, color mingling going on in the background so it looks a lot more interesting that way and then coming in with the last brush of that cobalt blue it's so pretty and just getting a touch of that in those stripes as well now that it's dry it didn't take long I'm gonna come in with my Windsor & Newton drawing ink this settles quite easily and so you have to make sure you keep it stirred uh, really well so I just have an old brush from the dollar store that I use. I use the end of the brush, the back end, just to stir up what the, has settled inside that jar in the bottom and in the corners. You can see it kind of looks goopy when you pull it out, but if you just stir it for a few moments, then it mixes um, back together pretty easily. 
and this collar is beautiful I have another video where I review this and I'll link that um, in one of the cards so you can take a look if you want to know more about this ink so I'm gonna use a ruler to create those straight lines you could do this freehand um, or if you really weren't sure you could put it put down some more washi tape and just use that as your guide I'm just gonna hold a ruler up and match it to the same edge as the washi tape stripes and then just run my brush along that just to keep my hand steady and it doesn't have to be perfect it's meant to be crafty and creative and fun and I just find this is really easy and quick and, and it does get a nice straight line. And this Winsor & Newton drawing ink does flow really, really nicely, but you do have to keep stirring it so you can't let it settle too long or the pigment separates and then you get kind of the oil base if you're only dipping into the top or if you dip too far down, you get just kind of a goop, a thick uh, bit of the pigment. So you do have to keep it stirred up, but otherwise it's really beautiful to use and it looks so gorgeous when it's dry and wet. Even both, it never changes its state. It just looks awesome. So I'm going to pull the stripes off now and see what the background looks like. And the washi tape comes off super easy. It's not sticky at all. It works perfect, but it creates a nice seal so it doesn't bleed when you're doing the watercolor. So here's a look at that finished background. It's super easy and really fun, a really nice project. And you could use any color. You could do red or do a Christmas combination. The possibilities are endless with this. So now I'm going to prepare my alpaca. I always want to call this a llama. I don't know if anyone else is the same way. I just, llamas kind of stick out to me. It kind of looks like a llama. I guess alpacas kind of look the same too. Um, but yeah, so here's the coloring. And I'm just doing this very basic and just getting his little face done. And I'll come in and put a little bit of color on his cheek as well. He's outside, I imagine, playing in the snow. He's got rosy cheeks. Might be a little chilly outside. So now I'm gonna prepare the base. My base color of my background, my watercolor is warm. So I really wanna keep some warm tones on him as well. And so I'm just starting with a very pale yellow to put down as the base for his fur. And then I wanna come in with some green and just do my shadows. Just really fun colors with this, not anything typical or what any alpaca would really look like, but just something fun for the card. So I'm doing my shadows on the right side edge and just hard edges. I'm not worrying about blending those into the background at all. And then I'm doing little flicks of my brush just to create those lumps and bumps in the fur for the alpaca fur. So now I'm coming in with another green and I'll list all the colors in the description below, but I'm gonna intensify those shadows a little bit. And this one is just going over the exact same areas as I did before. It's just bringing a little bit more beef to those um, shadows. And then doing this on the little lumps and bumps in the fur as well. And I have more of a blue color this time, more of a turquoisey color. And this creates some interest into the coloring as well. So it's not just one flat color and adding those different colors uh, really makes it dance a little bit more. Now I'm coming in with a darker green. This is the darkest green of the set and I'm just emphasizing the deepest parts of the shadow. So I'm not touching the fur bumps at all, just on the outside edges and underneath the areas where I have put shadow, just very lightly touching those areas. So now I decided to give this alpaca a nice pink scarf, kind of a, a throwback to red because of Christmas colors being red and green, but not exactly red. So something a little bit softer uh, with the pink. So I have a pink and a magenta and just coloring this very simply and putting my shadows in. And then I'm gonna bring in my gold uh, jelly roll pen here and just outline the strokes of that scarf. This isn't something I typically do, but I did wanna bring in the gold from the background. And so I found that this was a nice compliment and because all these colors are warm, they go really nicely together. It's just a nice balance in the color palette. And so just getting that gold outline, it matches really nicely too with that Winsor & Newton drawing ink. So now I have this all colored up, it's super simple. I'm gonna throw a die cut on this and run it through my Sizzix Big Kick machine. So I have some post-it tape, or you could use your washi tape as well just to hold that die in place. Super easy. I like to keep the post-it tape to the outside so it doesn't make dents on my art when it runs through the die cutting machine. 
So now I have some black cardstock. I did decide to put my sentiment on black. And so I'm just cutting a strip that can hold that sentiment. I did put my um, sentiment on the page just to see where um, approximate how much space I would need when I cut it. So now I'm preparing this with kitchen flour. I'm going to emboss uh, with Versamark ink. I'm going to emboss my sentiment here. And so again, I'm going to bring in some gold glitter for this. We're just going to glitz it up because it's Christmas and I just love all the glitter and the lights. So it's super fun. So this is from Recollections and it's called Clear Gold. It's really pretty. It's more of a bright glittery gold. So I'm just going to get that put in place and then run this under my heat tool. I'll do this off camera. Before I do, I just had some stray glitter emboss. So I'm just taking a very fine brush and just brushing that away. So now this is all heat set and ready to go. Now I'm going to trim down the sentiment tag just to fit on the page where I want it. So just trimming down the edges. And this is super simple. I just kind of eyeball each edge to make sure that the margins are the same on each side of the sentiment. So now I'm going to work on assembling the card. And so I think it's just about where I want it to be. I'm going to come in with my tape roller to begin and put that watercolor background onto my card base. So I like to rim the edges and then some tape across the middle. And I did get a refill for my tape roller, so I'm really excited about that because I love my tape roller. So lining these up on the folded edge and using the side of my hand, it's really easy to put these together this way. I did find I had a little bit of overlap on the card base. So it was sticking out um, from underneath the card backing. So I'm just going to trim that with my ruler really simply. It's just a small sliver, but it, it just makes a big difference to me. So just trimming it easy and then it has a nice flush edge. So now for the other two pieces, I'm going to put those on with foam tape and just a single layer. I'm just going to cut a piece for my little alpaca. And then I'm going to cut a little bit for his tush as well so it doesn't sag or bend down if there's pressure on that part of the, of the picture. Just so he sits nice upright. So I'm using my X-Acto knife to keep my hands out of the way so I can eyeball where the center of the card is and where he looks the best in position. So now I'm going to use some foam tape for the sentiment as well just to keep those two elements on the same visual level. Uh, so they're both popping up off the card. So getting those put into place and super easy. This card was so much fun to create. It was um, fun to just be creative with the background and use some materials I had on hand and glitz it up. I love all the gold. The gold's my favorite. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.